Chapter 1. What is Evolution? A curious aspect of the theory of evolution is that everybody thinks he understands it. Jacques Monod If anything is true about nature, it is that plants and animals seem intricately and almost perfectly designed for living their lives. Squids and flatfish change color and pattern to blend in with their surroundings, becoming invisible to predator and prey. Bats have radar to home in on insects at night. Hummingbirds, which can hover in place and change position in an instant, are far more agile than any human helicopter and have long tongues to sip nectar lying deep within flowers. And the flowers they visit also appear designed to use hummingbirds as sex aids. For while the hummingbird is busy sipping nectar, the flower attaches pollen to its bill, enabling it to fertilize the next flower that the bird visits. Nature resembles a well-oiled machine with every species an intricate cog or gear. What does all this seem to imply? A master mechanic, of course. This conclusion was most famously expressed by the 18th century English philosopher William Paley. If we came across a watch lying on the ground, he said, we would certainly recognize it as the work of a watchmaker. Likewise, the existence of well-adapted organisms and their intricate features surely implied a conscious, celestial designer. God. Let's look at Paley's argument, one of the most famous in the history of philosophy. When we come to inspect the watch, we perceive that its several parts are framed and put together for a purpose, e.g. that they are so formed and adjusted as to produce motion, and that motion so regulated as to point out the hour of the day, that if the different parts had been differently shaped from what they are, if a different size from what they are, or placed after any other manner, or in any other order than that in which they are placed, either no motion at all would have been carried on in the machine, or none which would have answered the use that is now served by it. Every indication of contrivance, every manifestation of design which existed in the watch, exists in the works of nature, with the difference on the side of nature, of being greater and more, and that in a degree which exceeds all computation. The argument Paley put forward so eloquently was both commonsensical and ancient. When he and his fellow natural theologians described plants and animals, they believed that they were cataloging the grandeur and ingenuity of God manifested in his well-designed creatures. Darwin had his own answer to the conundrum of design. A keen naturalist, who originally studied to be a minister at Cambridge University, where, ironically, he occupied Paley's former rooms. Darwin well knew the seductive power of arguments like Paley's. The more one learns about plants and animals, the more one marvels at how well their designs fit their ways of life. What could be more natural than inferring that this fit reflects conscious design? Yet Darwin looked beyond the obvious, suggesting and supporting with copious evidence two ideas that dispelled the idea of deliberate design. Those ideas were evolution and natural selection. He was not the first to think of evolution. Several before him, including his own grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, floated the idea that life had evolved. But Darwin was the first to use data from nature to convince people that evolution was true. And his idea of natural selection was truly novel. On the origin of species, turned the mysteries of life's diversity from mythology into genuine science. So, what is Darwinism? This simple and profoundly beautiful theory, the theory of evolution by natural selection, has been so often misunderstood, and even on occasion maliciously misstated, that it is worth pausing for a moment to set out its essential points and claims. We'll be coming back to these repeatedly as we consider the evidence for each. In essence, the modern theory of evolution is easy to grasp. It can be summarized in a single, albeit slightly long, sentence. Life on Earth evolved gradually, beginning with one primitive species, 
perhaps a self-replicating molecule, that lived more than 3.5 billion years ago. It then branched out over time, throwing off many new and diverse species. And the mechanism for most, but not all, of evolutionary change is natural selection. When you break that statement down, you find that it really consists of six components. Evolution, gradualism, speciation, common ancestry, natural selection, and non-selective mechanisms of evolutionary change. Let's examine what each of these parts means. The first is the idea of evolution itself. This simply means that a species undergoes genetic change over time. That is, over many generations, a species can evolve into something quite different, and those differences are based on changes in the DNA, which originate as mutations. The species of animals and plants living today weren't around in the past, but are descended from those that lived earlier. Humans, for example, evolved from a creature that was ape-like, but not identical to modern apes. Although all species evolve, they don't do so at the same rate. Some, like horseshoe crabs and ginkgo trees, have barely changed over millions of years. The theory of evolution does not predict that species will constantly be evolving, or how fast they'll change when they do. That depends on the evolutionary pressures they experience. Groups like whales and humans have evolved rapidly, while others, like the coelacanth, living fossil, look almost identical to ancestors that lived hundreds of millions of years ago. The second part of evolutionary theory is the idea of gradualism. It takes many generations to produce a substantial evolutionary change, such as the evolution of birds from reptiles, the evolution of new features, like the teeth and jaws that distinguish mammals from reptiles, does not occur in just one or a few generations, but usually over hundreds or thousands, even millions of generations. True, some change can occur very quickly. Populations of microbes have very short generations, some as brief as 20 minutes. This means that these species could undergo a lot of evolution in a short time, accounting for the depressingly rapid rise of drug resistance in disease-causing bacteria and viruses. And there are many examples of evolution known to occur within a human lifetime. But when we're talking about really big change, we're usually referring to change that requires many thousands of years. Gradualism does not mean, however, that each species evolves at an even pace, just as different species vary in how fast they evolve, so a single species evolves faster or slower as evolutionary pressures wax and wane. When natural selection is strong, as when an animal or plant colonizes a new environment, evolutionary change can be fast. Once a species becomes well adapted to a stable habitat, evolution often slows down. The next two tenets are flip sides of the same coin. It is a remarkable fact that while there are many living species, all of us, you, me, the elephant, and the potted cactus, share some fundamental traits. Among these are the biochemical pathways that we use to produce energy. Our standard four-letter DNA code.